Hi, Mike here with Bonoski Buccaneers, and we're starting a new series, Coastal Cooking and Recipes. Today I want to share with you my version of a local favorite, smoked king mackerel dip. My style is kind of a Florida Keys take with a slightly spicy mango flavor to it. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is to get prepare our fish. We're going to need about six to eight large fillets of king mackerel. And we have a couple of different ways to prepare it. And what I want to do is take you outside to the grill and we'll show those to you now. Now first we have to prepare the fish. Now there are one or two methods in this particular recipe and one is the old fashioned way where we're actually going to put it in a smoker and smoke it if you have the time and talent to do that. Or you can do it this way, boiling the fish in water with some crab boil. Um, I know that it may not sound that appealing but it actually comes out pretty good. Uh, the thing about it is uh, opposed to just smoking where you do run a tendency of being able to dry the fish out this won't dry the fish out and it actually tastes pretty good so what I'll do is I'll put an appropriate amount of crab boil in just follow the directions you know you can't go too wrong a bunch of salt and then I usually add some Tony Sacheries in there just to give it a little bit of kick Once again, just follow the instructions on the crab boil. You're going to bring it to a boil. You're going to put your fish in, let it boil for about uh, 30 minutes or so. Turn it off. Don't take the fish out yet. You're going to let it seep in there. You're going to let the water cool down with that fish sitting in it to get it to absorb all that crab boil and all those spices real good. Then we're going to take it back into the kitchen and we're going to start flaking it off, checking to make sure we don't have any bones or anything left in it. It's going to be real good. So we get done doing this, let's go back in the kitchen and I'll show you what we're going to finish up with. Alright, while that fish is out there cooling down, absorbing all the spices up, let me go ahead and run down the other list of ingredients that you're going to need and uh, we'll put them up on the screen there. And just to make sure I don't forget anything, I'm going to read it off of my uh, page out of my book that I've been working on. I'm going to put my eyeballs on so I can see it. All right, we're also going to need uh, about eight ounces of cream cheese, and you want to let that sit out and come to room temperature so it's easier to work with. About a third cup sour cream, one third cup mayonnaise, one cup golden Vidalia dressing, uh, about a tablespoon of ranch dressing, <clears throat> one tablespoon sweet relish, a dash of mustard, one teaspoon Everglades seasoning, <clears throat> which is something that we pick up at one of the local grocery stores. And uh, they've, got a, they've got a few different uh, varieties of the Everglades seasoning. Uh, they got some dry rubs and stuff out, and that, that's pretty good. <clears throat> you also need about one teaspoon Creole seasoning, and I use typically the Tony Sacheries. Uh, you're also going to need, uh, well, salt to taste, about half a teaspoon or so, maybe more. One sweet onion. Uh, you want about three to about half a dozen small green onions. Uh, one bunch of celery and a tablespoon of minced garlic okay all right so i got my my celery and everything sitting out here and we're going to go ahead and take that we're going to cut it up into fairly small pieces something that's going to be workable so what we're going to do later is we're going to put it all in the fruit food processor now as far as these fish dips go you uh you kind of make it your own by what you want to add to it. Now I say this is a, a mango flavored fish dip, but you can add whatever type of uh, flavoring you want to it to make it your own. You give me a big bowl over here. Make sure you got some big bowls for this too, because you're gonna fill them up. use your imagination where you put some stuff together. You know, first you're probably going to want to stick kind of close to the recipe, but uh, later on you get your base done, get you a tablespoon or so out, and try something different. Make it your own. Onions. Right there. Cut them tips off of them. them out. half 
button does in there. So. Okay. And put all that in there. And the onion done, the green onion. Now we need the good onion. This is a, a sweet onion, Vidalia onion. I'm going to chop it up too. Get you a nice big one. Now I uh, this this recipe started off as just a local favorite, and like I said, I added my own twist to it. Uh, when I started adding the mango uh, marinade. And the only reason I'm sharing this is because I really don't have any intention. I'm trying to make and market this. I just make it for friends, family. Now I'm making it for you. Now this, uh, this particular recipe, the way we're making it, it makes quite a bit. <clears throat> so you can always take the, the ingredients and cut them in half and only make half of this amount. Maybe it'll be a little bit more manageable for you. All right, we've got the onions and celery and stuff ready to go in there. Now I'm going to go out and check on the fish. I'll be back in a few minutes with it and uh, we're going to start flaking that fish off, right? All right, I got that fish now. Okay, that's ready to go. I'm gonna make some room over here. I need this in a bowl. I'm gonna get rid of that wood block there. We gotta get something here I can work with fish. Never work with the meats and stuff on the wooden board. Get you a good one there. All right, so now what we're gonna do. Yeah, I still want. Good. Now you can do this with your hands. Sometimes it helps if you got a fork. <clears throat> and we're just going to kind of start breaking that off of there. And uh, one of the things you're kind of looking for is just to make sure there ain't no bones or nothing left in there. And we're going to take it off of that skin. Like that there. Okay. Now some of this fish I had on a smoker kind of dark there. Remember I, I was doing it two ways so I got some of each. Okay. So I got some off of the smoker and some of it's going to have been boiled. So this is going to this is going to taste different from my usual because it's two ways. There's that skin. That was a piece I had folded in half that is. Now some people don't like that dark meat in there and you can you can Remove it if you want to, but I don't think that little bit hurt too much on that. Except right there, I'll leave that bit out. Now, you can also do this with tuna. That makes a really good dip if it's available. But uh, I ain't been tuna fishing yet this year. The weather hasn't cooperated with us, so. I ain't had no tuna. You're gonna have to use your fingers in there some. Now, usually down here on this back side, there ain't too many bones. You need about eight cups of packed meat. And I'll show that to you. Let me get my cup out. We'll take that stuff we don't been through and put it in there. Now this is this is a, a two cup measuring cup. So that there is about two cups. And you see what I've done is I put it in there, that's kind of pushed it down so it's packed. And that's what I'm talking about. We need four of these. Gotta have four of them. And if you come up a little short, that's okay. And if you come up with a little bit more, that's okay too. Because this is not an exact recipe. All right. That's it. That's our eight cups plus a little bit. 
King Mac will do. Way to go. All right, we've got our King Mackle all ready to go. We get rid of all this. I'll take that and throw it out in the woods. The raccoons will be happy tonight. They'll be having a feast. All right, so get all this out the way. All right, we got that. We got that. Wow. Wet ingredients, as they call them. Here, where you can see it. Now, that ain't quite warm. It's a little hard. It's our cream cheese. I could have, I could have brought that out a little bit earlier. Our sour cream and our mayonnaise. Get that mixed up, that'll help soften that cream cheese up some. Okay. secret ingredient. This is World Harbor's Mango Marinade. And it's sweet and it's got a little bit of spice to it. And it's my secret ingredient that makes my fish dip taste so good. I'm going to use some of this to help get this wet ingredient where I can work with it a little bit more. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I want to be able to put this in that big bowl and stir it up real good before I commence to putting it inside the food processor. Okay. All right. Now remember, I mentioned the garlic. tablespoon or two. We've got the sweet relish. Give me a spoon over here. Right. Dash of mustard. I'll put that in there. And that's the ranch dressing. We got the other wet ingredients that we just mixed up in this bowl. I'm gonna put that in there. So we stir it up, start getting that incorporated together. Start. We ain't nowhere near closed yet. <clears throat> A Vidalia dressing. Use your imagination whatever you make in your dip, you know. Keep saying it. Alright. There's an Everglades seasoning. I don't know what that side. That's kind of like a, a all season salt. That uh, so if you can't get the Everglades seasoning, you can get all season salt and it's almost the same thing. Not quite, but almost. And gotta have Tony's. Now, I don't put much of this in there because <clears throat> that's already spiced. All right. Maybe that's one reason my wife don't like it when I make this because I'm using the top <clears throat> of the Tupperware for her cakes. All right. We'll set that aside for a second. We'll show you something else. 
Okay, now, if all we had done was boiled this and the crab bowl and all, we would need something to give it the smoky flavor. And this uh, liquid smoke would do just a trick. And it comes usually in a hickory flavor and also mesquite. And if I can get the mesquite flavor, I use that one instead. But, uh, <clears throat> and I'm not going to put that much in here since we have already smoked some of this fish. Because it's already going to have a little bit. But if... Uh, If we had not smoked some of this fish, we would use a lot more to give it all that flavor. Because that there's a lot of king mackerel. I might use almost half a bottle on one recipe. But I'm going to do that make it good. Right. Time to put it in. Right over there. I'll put about half in there and, and try and get some of it mixed up. Okay, we're going to have to add some more wet to it, keep it where we can work it. Okay, like that. Oh, that's a lot of fish. That was a big one too. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to wet it up. Now we'll use about one and a half, which is a pint and a half, of these containers. It takes a lot of mango to flavor all that fish. It's going to take a little bit of work. You ain't gonna do too much at a time. All right, we're ready to make some noise. There you go. That one is pretty good. It's a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. That's it. There it is. Hmm. That's a lot of dip, ain't it? I gotta tell you what, though, that make a lot of people happy. All right. Let's put a little spice into it. A little more Tony's. Put probably about thought with about half a tablespoon of salt. That's a lot of dip. Make sure we've got enough salt now. Salt, the spice of life. That's it. We're all done. Now all I have to do is put it in containers and share it with my friends. We hope you've enjoyed our new cooking show. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can email me at mike at medonskybuccaneers.com. Be sure to go check out all of our videos on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash about scuba steve. When you're watching, be sure to like our videos and share them with your friends. Once again, we hope you've enjoyed our show. Y'all have a blessed day.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 